Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. And now, celebrating 15 years of broadcasting, here's your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. Whether you're tuning in on the radio dial here in Mississippi at WYAD 94.1 FM or through WYADonline.com, we're glad that you all could be with us. Also, those joining us through our online affiliates around the world, including our friends at iHeartRadio, we're glad you all could tune in as well. You know, our next guest is someone, I have to admit, I just recently discovered, I think, a very powerful episode of one of my favorite shows on ABC for the people. But Mike Wade has definitely been able to do work that he loves for some time. We're going to talk to him about his journey, but also what it's been like for him to bring different types of characters to life, including the character Rodney that I don't think anybody who watched this episode or For the People will forget. Now, if you guys are just not finding out about Mike, I'll let you know that of our segment, how you can stay connected with him. But Mike, hello to you and welcome to the program. Hey, Cyrus, how's it going? Thanks for, uh, thanks for having hey, me on. Hey, man, glad to do it. So, Mike, you know, I want to start off by talking about, you know, this journey for you. I mentioned to you right before we got started that, I mean, you have been on an amazing ride that I think, you know, this year, 2019, is just one part of it, even though many of us, like myself, are just not really being able to discover you. I mean, what has it been like for you, Mike, to do what you love as an actor? Oh, man, you know, it's, uh, I wouldn't w- really want to do anything else. It, it's, uh, I mean, it's been an amazing journey. It, it hasn't been an easy one. <laughs> But uh, I'll definitely say it's well worth it. Uh, all the work that you have to put in, uh, the dedication, it's worth it to, uh, you know, tell some powerful stories and affect people in a positive way. Exactly. So, you know, I guess an obvious question would be then, Mike, for a lot of us, is how did this all begin? I mean, I noticed even when I was on your website when I was prepping for this, that, of course, it seems as though acting seemed to speak to you. What was it about acting that made you say, this is one of the things I want to do with my life? Uh, you know, um, I've always been interested in acting. Uh, I remember my mom telling me uh, <laughs> that I was uh, at times uh, the class clown in uh, okay. <laughs> in school. Uh, I would get done with my work early, and then I would kind of entertain the people around me. And uh, over the years, I kind of shied away from that and just, you know, focused on my lessons. But um, I just for myself, watching TV, watching film, I'd always, you know, learn something from it. There's always some message, you know, uh, mm-hmm. in a play, in a film, TV, so... If we can do that, then, you know, if I could be part of that, then, you know, I'll be a, a happy guy. Uh, and so, you know, went to school, and, uh, you know, in college I studied psychology, and a buddy of mine, he uh, he convinced me to take these two acting classes, and, you know, I, I told him, hey, you know, I don't I don't want to be around actors. Actors are weird. <laughs> and he says, uh, <laughs> he says, come on, man, it'll be an easy A. So I went in there, and obviously I loved it, um, and I came to find out actors aren't weird. Actors are in touch with themselves, they're compassionate, they, you know, they see the world differently, and uh, now I see the world uh, the same way, so uh, that's, that's pretty much what it was for me. My, uh, my coach in that uh, acting class, he uh, encouraged me to, to give it a shot, and I went ahead and did it. It was something that I always wanted to do, but I was, you know, like most people, I was a little scared to, to go for it, but uh, I was surprised to see, uh, once I took that first step, how things just started opening up for me. You know, the next right. step uh, became obvious to me. So, you know, it, it hasn't been an easy journey, but I know that I'm on the right path. Yeah. And knowing that you're on the right path, Mike, is that one of the things that kind of keeps you motivated? I, you know, I've talked to a lot of uh, people in your industry over the years on this program, and one of the things I've noticed for those especially who've had some years behind them is that, you know, they're definitely doing it because they, they're passionate about it, and then, two, they can't see themselves doing anything else. I mean, is that kind of where you fall in when it comes to where you are at this point? Oh, absolutely. If there is, you know, any other... Uh actors who are looking to make a career at this and they're, they're sort of new, they'll, uh, they'll second what I'm about to say. There have been numerous times when I've thought about doing something else, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I just can't break away from it. It's like, I have to do it. Uh, you know, you have to be smart with your money. You have to keep a low overhead, but I just, you know, I thought about, you know, I have a, a college degree. There's numerous other mm-hmm. things that I could do, but right. this is what I have to do. So, yeah, there's been times I thought about it. Uh, Hey, maybe I can do something else. I could be living like some of my other friends. But, you know, to me, this this is worth it. And um, 
So after college, uh, I went to a professional acting school, and in my first year coach, what she told us was, you guys better have a good reason to be here because that's the only thing that's going to keep you here uh, in acting school, but also just uh, pursuing a career as an actor. And yeah. for me, it's about uh, affecting people. You know, it's great to get a paycheck. It's great to be able to uh, support yourself doing what you love. But I don't think you can put a dollar amount on affecting people in a positive way. Uh, you know, um, somebody seeing your work and, you know, maybe they're not able to express themselves uh, and they, you know, they they say, hey, that, that was it right there. You know, that's that's priceless. You can, I can't put a dollar amount on that. So that's what right. kept me kept me in this, uh, this affecting people in a positive way. Well, Mike, I can definitely tell you, uh, which is what led to this conversation today, you definitely are doing that. Um, I, I, I was not aware of you by name um, before this past week uh, and before I was watching uh, For the People and, and watching this episode unfold and seeing you bring the character Rodney to life. I'm sure you have gotten a lot of response uh, from this episode. I want to talk about that experience, especially in wake of what you just shared your coach told you, because, I mean, <laughs> the passion you brought out in, in bringing Rodney to life in that in that episode and his arc in that episode was really powerful. I mean, what has it been like for you to see the way that people have responded to that? Oh, it's, it's been great. Um, you know, it's like I said, I, uh, there are people who have brought up the fact that this episode and uh, all the episodes of uh, season two for the people are based on, uh, you know, real life occurrences. So for me, I'm fortunate that I, I, I'm just playing a part. I'm telling the story. Um, unfortunately, you know, there was somebody who really experienced something like this. Um, so, and that's my motivation. You know, anytime I get a part, anytime I play a role, I always want to do it justice. I always remember, hey, somebody's been through this, you know? And so I take right. it very seriously, and I'm um, willing to put myself in that emotional place. Uh, you know, so it, it's been great to get the uh, the response that, you know, that I've gotten. So I'm, I'm uh, very grateful for that. Yeah. Well, like, like I was, you know, half joking with you about before we began, began, it was not easy for me to find you initially, but thankfully <laughs> I had some help thanks to Twitter. Twitter's always come through, and I have to say Shundaland is definitely, the Shundaland family and crew and supporters have always been gracious to me. And But I have to tell you the, the pinch me moment for myself, Mike, in watching that scene, seeing Larry Cedar as the judge, Jasmine Floyd Brown as your attorney, then you and thinking, I've interviewed all of them because <laughs> uh, wow. Larry and I actually, Larry and I, he interviewed for my television show and web series in Los Angeles three years ago. I interviewed Jasmine last year for season one. And then it was so funny when I set up this conversation with you, I was like, I interviewed all three of them. That's so cool. I mean, but, you know, it, I have to talk about working with Jasmine because one thing I recognize about her when I first interviewed with her and have followed her career and we've stayed connected since then I mean, to be able to see her character evolve, especially her telling her truth the way that she was to, you know, I mean, in this particular you know episode, and I'll talk around this. So I don't spoil it for those. If you guys have not seen it, you guys can go now and see it, on, of course, through our partners at Amazon, but also, of course, through your favorite streaming service. I mean, what was that like for you to, when you first saw the episode? I'll ask it this way, Mike. What was it like for you to kind of see it all unfold? Uh, it was... Uh it was great, and I think it was just a testament to uh, what a collaboration, uh, TV, film, any type of uh, art form is. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Chelsea Great, the writer, uh, amazing, um, amazing writer. And like, like you said, so seeing it on TV was different than reading it myself, different than the table read with all the cast there, because you get to really see how the main point, it all connects with all these different characters, you know, and right. um, I don't want to give it away either, but it's just a powerful, powerful message. And Rodney's uh, part of it was, you know, just one part of, of the whole. Um, and working with Jasmine was, was, was great, man. She's really a beautiful soul, you know, um, such a, such a sweet person. Um, yeah. Uh, it was such a joy working with her. I can't, you know, it's hard to put it into words, but uh, right. it was, yeah, it was great. 
Yeah. Well, for those who are just tuning in, he's on the radio side or online. You're listening to Conversations Live. We're excited to welcome to our program today an actor who uh, definitely has wowed people uh, thanks to the newest episode of For the People. If you guys have not seen it on ABC, you guys definitely need to do it. We're talking about actor Mike Wade. We're talking to Mike not only about the journey to acting, but also the love he has for it. And, of course, now what it's been like for him to share that with all of you. Now, social media, again, made this, literally made this conversation possible. Ironically, and I have to shout out uh, Tom Berica because Tom was the one who who helped me set up the interview with Jasmine as well. <laughs> so, oh wow! So all of the, uh, yeah, all of this kind of it, it's so funny how it kind of all ties back in together. But um, how has social media been for you? Because I mean, you're on the sites like we are. I mean, what has it been like for you to engage with your fans and to realize that you do have fans that are following your career? That's uh, that's amazing, man. Um, and and shout out to Tom as well. I remember speaking with him on the set. He's a great guy. Um. Social media, I've I've come to see it as something uh, is definitely necessary, but uh, can be a fun thing too. I'm I'm a little bit more old fashioned, uh, so social media is kind of new to me. I've I've been on the sites for a little while, but mm-hmm. my experience with it has been is uh, you know independent films that I've done or other guest star spots that I've done. I I put it out there so people can see it, but also for casting directors, producers. Uh, sure. That's what I've sure. done, and I've only until recently started interacting more. Uh, but it's fun. It's it's fun to see um, how people are affected uh, by by the work and how it's you know maybe made some changes in their lives, made them think about a family member or, or something like that. It's uh, I think it's a great tool. All right. There is one scene of, of, from this episode that you were in on For the People, uh, Mike, we have to talk about, because I think there's a bigger message there for our audience out there. And I think I've watched it now three times. I told my manager, I said, you got to watch this episode. So he watched it yesterday. He's like, okay, I see what you're talking about. But there's yeah. a scene where Rodney is talking with Jasmine's character and basically is talking about, about the danger of hope. And I think oh, that is one of that is something that so many people. What was that like for you to articulate what really is the lives of so many people? Yeah, I um. Well, that's uh, I'll say again why it was so great working with Jasmine because I think I think for the people I think the cast is perfect. I think every character is amazing and each actor fills their role perfectly, and especially Jasmine because. As Rodney, you're speaking to this person who uh, they believe it. They are filled with hope, and it's heartbreaking each time things don't, you know, work out. Um, right. But to be in that place to where you don't have hope is is very dangerous. Uh, of course, when you're in in that place, you don't you don't recognize it. But uh, I mean, the absence of hope is despair, and that's right. where we make some of the I don't want to call them worse decisions, but, you know, hope is, is I would say, vital. I, I say we need that to live uh, because if right. you don't have hope, how can you, you know, what are you living for? But for from Rodney's perspective, that hope was killing him. Yeah. You see, so he had to make that choice. And, and for me as an actor, I just, you know, I don't, I don't know if I, um, you know, as far as preparation goes, you know, some stuff I think about, some stuff I think I just understand um, internally on an instinctual level. And I think with Rodney, uh, much of this was coming from instinct. It, was co- it wasn't it was really coming from my mind. It was coming from a deeper place, hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, right. In acting school, they told us not to share <laughs> our, uh, our internal motivations for playing a character, but I would say that uh, I definitely can relate to Rodney. And as I was playing the part, um, I think I connected even more, uh, if, if that makes any sense. Uh, because yeah, when you initially get a part... Yeah, okay. I'm glad to hear that. Because um, initially when you get a part, you're thinking about it, you're constructing it, and you never really know until you get it on its feet and you're working with another actor and you're, you're there, you know, in that moment. Uh, so with this character, I was really able to just be in the moment and... Um, you know, just let things let things flow, and that's that's a great feeling. Even though this was an emotional roller coaster, it's you know it still feels good to be that connected to a character. Right. 
Well, you know, hats off to you, Mike. I mean, it really, like I said, it struck a chord. I mean, so much so that I was like, okay, I got to find this guy. I mean, my manager will tell you, I literally, I think I watched <laughs> the end credits probably seven or eight times. This is no lie. To see if oh, I wow. and I actually Googled every person on there, and I'm like, okay, that's not him. That's not him. Well, that's <laughs> not him. And so finally I had to just turn to Twitter and say, okay, who is this guy? <laughs> you know, I cannot find him. And I typically don't try to to do that, honestly, because, I, you know, I respect people are busy, especially on a Saturday. Literally, for our audience out there, all of this happened on Saturday. I, I could not get that yeah. episode out of my mind. I, I tweeted it on Saturday. Look, I, I can't get this out of my mind. I need to know who this guy is. I want to interview him. <laughs> and by the end of the day, Saturday, I they had tweeted me back the name, the handle. And I reached out to you. You responded right back, and I appreciate that, Mike. And yeah. now here we are. So how does that feel? I have to ask you this question. How does that feel to know that you've been able to impact people just by doing what you love? Oh, man, that's uh it's hard to uh, to put words on that. Um, I would say that's my uh, that's really I, what I believe my life is about. I think that's what I'm here for. Um, I'm really about uh, inspiration, and uh, you know I get inspiration from certain artists, and that's what I'm that's what I'm about: uh, inspiring people, encouraging people. Um, I think that I don't think that I know that through the arts we can create the world that we want to live in. You know. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, human beings, we can do anything. You know, we work together. Right. We can, I mean, look at technology now. I mean, we can do some amazing things. Right. But we have to remember with what we create, we have to remember humanity. We have to remember people. And, you know, are we going to create things that are going to end, end lives or are we going to create things that are going to uh, preserve life? We're going to create things that are going to give people a better quality of life. And I think through the arts, we can do that. So a lot of the TV shows, a lot of the films, you know, I, I think a lot of those messages are there. And uh, that's what I tend to try to watch. And those are the projects I like to be involved in. So to hear that my work impacted people, I mean, I, I would say that's, that's, that feels great because that's really my goal. You know, I would say a life goal because I've, I've devoted my life yeah. to, to acting to the arts. Gotcha. Again, everyone, Mike Wade has been our guest. Great conversation with you, Mike. How can our audience stay connected with you, man? Yeah, it's been great speaking with you too, Cyrus. Uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I am on social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, of course, <laughs> um, at Mike Wade Actor <laughs> is my handle for all of those. And uh, I have a website as well, MikeWade.com. You can uh get links to all my social media, links to my IMDb page, uh, pretty much anything is, is there. All my contact information is on uh, MikeWade.com. And, uh, yeah, reach out to me. Well, Mike, man, keep up the great work, man. Keep, you know, inspiring people through your passion and through your, you know, your work and, and looking forward to our next conversation together, man. Yeah, I, I definitely would love to speak to you again, Cyrus. Thank you so much for reaching out and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Hey, you did the same thing, man. Appreciate that. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. If you all came in late, you missed part of the conversation with Mike, don't worry. Thanks to our online friends, you all can catch the replay right after we go off the air. The link is already available through our social media site. So head over to Facebook.com slash Cyrus Webb or go to Twitter.com slash Cyrus Webb. If you click on the link there, you can listen to the show completely for free and share with your friends from there, too. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Make sure you take out time to enjoy some good music as well as a great book. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live. Let's make it a great one.